Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through the island of Dr. Necro, which is a cooperative adventure game for one to four players. It's on Kickstarter right now, and I'm going to be doing a run through so you can see what it's all about. Decide if you might want to back it. Although, before I get going, I should point out everything you're seeing here is prototype components. These little uh, wooden chips, I'm sure, are going to be replaced with something nicer looking. A lot of the cards you'll see have no art on them. You know, and plenty of other cards aside have placeholder art on them. So you can go hit the I in the top right corner of the screen to check out the Kickstarter page to see what the final game looks like if you want. Just bear that in mind as we play and try to escape the island of Dr. Necro. Because what is the situation? Well, here's the island right there. As part of setup, we shuffle up all the adventure cards. Although, for a simpler game and for an introductory game, there's a special way to set the deck up so that the easy stuff is at the top and, the, and it gets progressively tougher as it goes. But to play the real game, the full game, you just shuffle everything up. And in the middle third of the deck, somewhere there are the scientists. These are the the guys and gals we have come here to rescue uh, because we're a rescue team. In the bottom third of the deck, somewhere, there is the escape ship. We've got to find the scientists and then we've got to get to the escape ship before time runs out and the island self-destructs and sinks into the ocean. Oh my goodness. So that is the situation. But before we get going, we have to assemble our team, which is one of the coolest things about this. Now, the game comes with a big old deck of hero cards. And what's going to happen is each player is a hero based on three different traits that they will get. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm going to go for the main way, which is every player gets four cards and they look at them, pick three of them. So let's see. Uh, clairvoyant, Robust, Charmed, and Psychic Blaster. So I can pick three of these to decide who my character is, and then I'll temporarily set the fourth one aside to go into a, uh, a hero pool. So, what do I want? Hmm. Well, one thing that's actually really interesting is, if at all possible while making your character, it's generally wise to kind of double down on individual traits. As you can see, Robust and Charmed are both heroic traits, and Clairvoyant and Psychic Blaster are both psychic traits, because we might come across events that want somebody to be particularly strong at psychicness or heroics. So it's good to, interestingly, for the most part, it's good to double down. So if I'm going to keep... If I'm going to get rid of one of these, either I'm going to get rid of one of the two Psychics or one of the two Heroics. And you know what? I love Robust, um, which basically it makes it tougher for the, for the Adventure deck to take me out. So I think I'm going to keep Robust. Now, I'm going to keep Robust. I'm definitely going to keep Charmed. So those are so I'm Charmed and Robust. Am I a Psychic Blaster or am I Clairvoyant? I'm going to keep one of these. Uh, let's see. The Clairvoyant, you can turn the top card of the Adventure deck face up at any time. So you can see what's coming. Uh, so you can plan a little bit better. And Psychic Blaster, uh, let's see. Plus one charge at the end of each turn. Lose one charge before you roll to make your combat result. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a Psychic Blaster. I'm a robust, charmed Psychic Blaster. Although I don't know exactly what that looks like at this point. So this is going to come over here uh, because it's still potentially available. Now, while I was doing all that, picking my starting character, Jen was doing the same. So I'm playing a two-player game today. Keen Senses, Battle Rage, Pyro, uh, Kinetic, and a Security Expert. So we got two tech cards, a combat card, and a psychic card. So once again, I think we'll keep the two tech cards. And let's see, Security Expert and Keen Senses. So are we going to go for uh, Pyro, Kinetic, or Battle Rage? Again, because we want to like double down. Uh, plus one charge each time you disable, destroy one of your skill cards. So... As you take damage, you will start losing your skills, and I mean, you'll become weaker. But so if you have Battle Rage, um, the more cards you lose, the stronger your remaining cards will get. And uh, let's see, pyro, uh, Pyrokinetic, plus one charge when you rest, every time you rest, which might happen a while, or might happen every once in a while. Lose three charges to defeat and discard a monster straight out, even if it still has health and says otherwise. Wow, just instantly take anybody out. Um, or lose one charge to add one combat result to to add one to a combat result. Ooh, so this is a better fighter. This is get tougher as things go on. Hmm. Um. What the heck? We're, let's go with battle rage. So then we put the uh, pyrokinetic up here. Right. 
So, and now, so we're almost done. But the thing is, we have this pool of cards. And if we had more players, it would be a pool of bigger cards. Now everybody in turn order could, uh, if they want to, swap one of their existing cards for one that's in the pool. Uh, but I, so... So, I mean, I could dump one of my Heroic cards to get another Psychic card, so I'm really doubling down on Psychic powers instead of Heroic powers. Hmm, that's interesting. Alrighty. Alright, so, I mean, I could become a robust uh, Psychic Blaster Pyrokinetic and drop the Charmed or drop the Robust. And by the, you know, or, or I could take the Clairvoyant back or Jen could take Clairvoyant. You know, I think Jen's happy with her. She's not going to bother take him. And I already dropped Clairvoyant. But, uh, for peeking, uh, looking ahead at cards, but do I want this pyrokinetic? I don't think I'd want to drop the robust. Um, because every time I use a charge on this, I can basically, instead of having, when I take damage, instead of having to start losing my cards, I can um, use the power of robust to basically, it's, it's basically armor. I am robust. But charmed, initial charges, roll a die. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to drop charmed. And replace it with pyrokinetic. All right. So the team has now been assembled. I am some kind of crazy psychic mind control tough guy. And Jen is a security expert with keen senses and a certain Klingon-esque battle rage. And we are ready to go. And uh, it is time. To save those scientists from the island of Dr. Necro. Now, in case you hadn't noticed from the art you've seen here from the... This game definitely has kind of a pulp science fiction, Buck Rogers, Flash, Gordon, you know, 40 serial film feel. And uh, not only is that reflected in us, but it'll also be in, reflected in the events we're going to be coming across. But we're ready to go. Here's Jen's dice. Here's my dice. And so we start out, I have two charges. You can see the number two there. Two charges on Robust. I can use that power twice. I can use the one, two, three, four, five. The pyrokinetic power five times. And unfortunately, my psychic blaster starts with no charges. Oops. There it is. Five. Secured extra starts with nothing, nothing. Wow. Jen starts with no charges at all for any of her abilities. And before you get going, players are supposed to tell everybody else exactly what they're capable of doing. So let me go ahead. Again, the robust is I can use these charges to absorb damage that I would take. Pyrokinetic. I can use these charges. First of all, I build up more charges whenever he has a team rest. I can spend three of these five to instantly take out a monster, or I can spend one to add plus one to my combat rolls. And Psychic Blaster, this builds up slowly over time. At the start of every turn, it gets one charge, and I can use a charge before I roll for combat to make my combat result an instant nine. Uh, or I can use one of the charges it builds up here to add one to any combat result of anybody. So um, I can make my, my big hits with nines, or I can add one to Jen's attacks. Jen, she's got, uh, let's see, her security expert. When you roll for a trap, you can roll one extra die and choose a die to remove from the result. So you're better at traps. And if you use a charge on this, which she doesn't start with any charges, um... Right, uh, use a charge. Oh, no, actually, I'm sorry. For a security expert, you can take a charge from any card. From you know, any of your other ones. Or, so, Jen's security expert can use the charge from my cards. And if you do, replace one of your teammates' uh, trap roll dice with an unused die result. So, okay. So, if I'm having to do a trap... Um, <clears throat> You know, Jen, security expert, can help me out by using one of my charges. She also has keen senses. You can add or subtract one point from any non-combat roll. So if we roll for any other reason, she can add or subtract one. So she's good at non-combat stuff with her keen senses and battle rage. Um, let's see. Again, she has no charges. Plus one charge. She earns a charge every time we, uh, every time she disables or destroys one of her cards. So as her cards start getting weakened, her battle rage gets tougher. She can spend these to put uh, to instantly score a hit against a monster, guaranteed. All right. That's what we're all about. Uh, and we are ready to go. Here's the way the game works. There's a nice little summary of how every turn works. First of all, at the beginning of the turn, we decide whether we're going to explore or rest. We rest to heal ourselves up or recharge. I don't think we're going to do that right now. Uh, and so instead, we are going to explore. And because uh, we, we have only a certain amount of time. At the end of every turn, the, the countdown clock is going to count down. So we need to be exploring. Now, to explore, we have to pick a speed and mark it. Let's pick a speed of 7. Uh, yeah, and because that means we are going to have to face, on this turn... Seven cards. If we wanted, we could go crazy and set a speed of 15. 
but so we could go faster. But the tricky thing is, the faster we go, the more we um, open ourselves up to danger. The slower we go, the longer it's going to take to get through this deck and find the scientist. So you have to kind of hit a balance. It's interesting, the rules actually suggest seven is a good starting speed. So I'm going to go with that. And then you might slow down or speed up. Uh, ideally, by the end of the game, you want to be going like 10, 12, 13, as you find stuff that potentially makes you more and more powerful as the game goes on. <clears throat> All right. So we're going for a speed of seven. That means we are going to draw seven cards from this deck and face off against them as best we can. So here we go. Card number one. So you draw a card, you move the timer up, and we have stumbled across some poison gas. Okay. So um, here's what we're going to have to do. This is a uh, speed test. This is a trap. So we have to roll two dice and compare it against the speed. Our current speed is seven. We're going to roll two dice and compare against our speed. If, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, if uh, what we roll is greater than or equal to our speed, so we want to roll high, we find an antidote um, and there's no effect from the poison gas. But if we roll lower than our speed, then um, we spotted the symptoms too late. Each agent takes two points of damage. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, well, that is kind of scary. Alrighty, so um, let's face off against this poison gas. And let's see. Um, now, usually, if I recall correctly, for one of these traps, everybody has to roll independently. So everybody has to make this test. And it's only when the card specifically says it's a single group. Let me double check that. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, da, 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 pick speed, um, traps. Yes. Traps with the, I, yeah, to roll this, 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 require only one. Uh, the card text will indicate when all players... No, no, I, okay, I had that backwards. It, if all players have to roll, it says it. Otherwise, uh, we just roll a single thing. So we're going to roll. And remember, I think we're going to have Jen make this roll because she has keen senses. She can add or subtract one. In this case, we want to add. Uh, it's interesting. In this case, for this trick or trap, it would have been better if we were going slower because, well, we would have been able to... It wouldn't have surprised us so much, we'd have a better chance of, of beating our seven. The faster we were going, the less likely we would have been to detect the poison gas and the less likely it would be to roll higher. We need to roll more than seven right now. We're going to have Jen do it because her keen senses automatically let her add one. And, but no problem, we rolled an eight, Jen adds one, it's a nine, no big deal. The poison gas, uh, we, apparently we stumbled across an antidote, there was no effect. And so, that was our first of seven. Let's move on to the second. Draw a card, move the timer up, and my gosh, it's another trap right off the bat. Here we get stuck in a mirror maze. And um, hold your fire, hold your fire. Okay. So once again, we're going to check against speed. And um, if our speed, if we, if, um, if we roll higher than our, or greater than our speed, then we make it through no problem. But again, if we roll lower, we lose one time. So we'll have general once again because of her excellent keen senses. Oh, by the way, I, I forgot. At the, we started this turn. At the start of the turn, I should have earned one charge for my Psychic Blaster, which is going to help when we eventually have to fight some stuff. All right. Oh, wow. All right. So that's pretty bad. And um, Jen's Keen Senses adds one to that. So we have a three, which is definitely less than our speed. So we, unfortunately, got a little bit lost. Now, Remember, Jen's also a security expert. She can... Oh, I totally forgot. Jen is a security expert. She rolls one extra die. So she has an extra die whenever um, she has to do a trap. So we did... And so she rolls an extra one and then discards one. So we still have a chance here. If she rolls a, a, a five or a six, come on, roll high. A three. All right, well. So she gets to pick one she doesn't want. She got rid of that. So that's four. Plus her keen senses is five. It still wasn't quite enough. So the mirror maze got us and we lose a little bit of time. That's scary. That is not a good start. All right. All right. Then we're going to draw our third one. And we've got a triphase photon pack. Now, this is an item. And what happens is, this is something that we can collect later for beating certain monsters. So, it gets put down here in the monster loot. Alright, now we will draw another one, our fourth. 
And it's another trap! Wow! I mean, I shuffled the heck out of this deck before we started. I want to show you some monsters and events and other stuff. We just keep finding traps. All right. So, once again, this is one where we want to be going fast so we can be stealthy. Um, you're so stealthy, no effect if we get past security and surveillance. But if we roll low, it'll be bad. So, once again, Jen is the security expert with keen senses. She will roll. And, oh my gosh! What the what? Oh dear! Um, oh my goodness. Let's see, all my stuff is for combat. And, uh, yeah. All right. Well, so she'll take the three plus one is four. That is not good enough. So, um, someone tripped the sensor. Put this card into play. You can see we have a space for ongoing effects. Uh, while this card is in play, subtract one from all combat results. Destroy this card at the end of turn. So, that wasn't too bad. I mean, heck, maybe we won't even have any combat this round. Who knows? So, all right. I I I've seen worse. Let's go on to card number five. And another trap! This is ridiculous. Fortunately, we have the Trap Queen. She's going to start rolling better, folks. Trust me. Oh, by the way, I totally forgot. Something that is new. By the way, I didn't mention. This is the second edition of Island of Dr. Crow. The first one came out many, many years ago. This new one adds a whole bunch of new cards and new gameplay features. One of the gameplay features is experience points. Every time you um, come up against a trap and you fail, as a team, we get one experience. So, hey, something bad happened to us, but something good happens. We can start earning experience. If we earn enough experience, we can spend it to get another trait card, which basically increases our health and gives us more powers. So, it's not the end of the world if things fail. But anyway, we're about to have another trap, a concealed pit. All right, uh, once again, it's just a single roll of speed. And, um, right, so again, we want to be going faster. So, sometimes traps reward you for going fast, uh, but for all the traps we've seen so far, these ones all want us to go slow. So, we got to roll higher than our speed of seven. Alrighty, and Jen, she will... Let's prove that security expertness. All right, that's more like it. She'll choose the five, and the five plus one is 11. That's more than the seven, so nothing bad happened. All right, if something had happened, we'd end our, we'd end our turn immediately, or a teammate would have to take four points of damage. Wow. That would have been absolutely terrible. I am glad we avoid that one. Let's see. Let's move on to card six. And uh, it's the Whaler. All right. No art here, but this is a bad guy. We are going to have to stop and have a little bit of a fight now. So here's the way combat works. Every bad guy you face off on the Island of Dr. Crow has hit points equal to the number of players. So since we're playing a two-player game, we need to do two points of damage to this Whaler. If we defeat the Whaler, we will collect one loot, which it just so happens there is one loot. Although, we have the option, I mean, maybe the loot over, maybe there is no loot, or maybe there's loot here, but we don't particularly like it. Instead of collecting the loot that's stated here, we can instead collect one charge and give it to anybody. If we're, if we're not particularly crazy about the loot or there is no loot. So a whaler. When the whaler is defeated, all agents on or off your team without psychic cards take one point of damage. Now I'm crazy psychic. I'm pyrokinetic and I'm psychic, but they're a psychic blaster. So when we beat this guy, Jen is going to take a point of damage because she has no psychic ability whatsoever. Alrighty. But you know what? That's okay because every time Jen takes damage, her battle rage can increase. Unless it's her battle rage that takes damage. But anyway, we now have to face off against the whaler, this whaler. Um, and the target number we're trying to hit is 7. Or actually, we're trying to beat. We have to beat a 7. Uh, so that's not too terribly tough. Jen, she's just got to roll two dice now because her security hector doesn't help her in a fight. And she has to do better than a seven. Now me, I'm rolling my two dice and I've got all kinds of stuff that I could throw in here uh, to help out. So, mm, let's see here. Excuse me. Now if I wanted, heck, I could just go on ahead and spend three of this right now and defeat and discard the monster just instantly. And um, although Jen would still take a point of damage, because Jen's really not a particularly good fighter at this point, which means if I'm doing all the fighting, we'll have to go through at least two rounds of combat um, because I, you know, I'm much more inclined to be able to take it out. Although the interesting thing is as well, um, the damage that we end up having to take 
I can absorb all of it. You know, it doesn't have to go equally. We can have it all go to one player or another. And I've got two shards of robustness. So I can afford to take a couple of hits. So yeah, let's go on ahead and fight it. So what everybody does is everybody roll. Oh, although I should say we have another choice. We don't have to fight at all. If we looked at this and said, yeah, this is just too tough for us. Let's beat feet. We could flee. Now what that means is everybody would take one point of damage, but we would earn another experience point for running away. And uh, let's see, does it actually, I mentioned it here? No, I don't think it does. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we could flee instead of fight. So we're each going to roll. And um, right, do I have to play? I, I, I can add one afterwards, or I could spend three. And uh, right. Oh, before I roll, I could spend this charge, and my combat result will be a guaranteed nine. Um, or after I roll, I could spend this charge to add one to either myself or to Jen. So my psychic blast can help out Jen. Let's see how well we do. Alrighty. Hey, no problem, actually. That was a lot of worry about nothing. So, I rolled an 8. Jen rolled an 11. We totally took this guy out. We've each done, you know, one, two points of damage. The Whaler is gone. Because he, he wasn't that tough. He was going to be pretty easy to beat anyway. But the important thing is, every non-psychic, because he's a psychic Whaler, um, gets, and that's W-A-I-L-E-R, by the way, takes one point of damage. So, Jen is going to have to take a point of damage. Now, here's the way that works. You may notice, every one of these trade cards has two hit points. That means each of us, at the beginning of the game, has six hit points to our name. But now, Jen's got to take a point of damage. Um, which means she flips it and loses that special power. Um, I think she'll lose her keen senses because she has security expert. So now she's down to one, two, three, four, five hit points left. Alrighty. And um, because, uh, you know, she's pissed off about that, she has earned a battle rage, which uh, means she can just have an instant hit on a future monster. She's not a particularly good roller, although well, she rolled well this time, but now she can just instantly guaranteed hit because she's taken that point of damage. And now in the future, on a future turn, instead of choosing a speed and continuing to race through, we can rest, which means Jen could flip this back if she wanted. Or instead of flipping a card back, you could get a charge back on one of your cards. Anyway, so that was the sixth, and now we have one more card to face before our first turn is over. Okay, everybody, those scientists are proving hard to find. If you want to hang out and see how far we can go, hit that eye in the top right corner screen to go to the extended playthrough, or instead you can go to Final Thoughts, your choice, in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.